Grobman McAllister was purchased by the University of California uh, from those proceeds, which included $2 billion raised by citizenry, and was purchased. And then the Opera Building was dedicated in October of 1931, and this building, the War Memorial Veterans Building, in November of 1931. And I note that there is a national commission to commemorate Armistice Day, the centennial. San Francisco is one of a hundred cities which was designated and chosen as a part of that commemoration. And with that, I am pleased uh, to introduce the presiding officer of the War Memorial Board of Trustees, which uh, was established as part of the 1931 San Francisco Charter. This is Nancy Hellman Bechtel. His family, the Hellman family, was here November 11, 1918. Nancy is much younger. Not a heck of a lot younger. <laughs> anyway, I am the president. I'm very pleased to be the president of the War Memorial Board of Trustees and I'm honored to welcome you all to this beautiful building, to the Veterans Building, and to the uh, and to, to this green room. If you look, this is the original color that the green room was. It was not it was not named green room because it was green. It was it was a green room because it was the reception room. Um, and on this day, 100 years ago, the most brutal and gruesome war that had ever taken place ended. I think you all know that the, the guns were silenced at the 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. This was the great war, World War I, the war to end all wars, right? All right. This war is totally important to remember as the war that did not end all wars. Um, it was the foundation that led directly into World War II. Uh, it sowed the seeds of the Cold War between America and the Soviet Union. Um, the, the treaty with its arbitrary borders uh, resulted in enormous turmoil in the Middle East, which continues to this day. Unbelievable. But the joy and relief of this armistice were celebrated throughout the nation and, of course, in San Francisco. Um, as perhaps you all saw in the Chronicle yesterday, there were hundreds of thousands of people who were celebrating in the streets. There was certainly a lot of reason to be joyous and celebrate after these years of unending tragedy. But already then, San Franciscans knew how to throw a great party. A tradition which in most recent years was perfected by our beloved Charlotte Schultz. <laughs> Would have been even bigger then. <laughs> it's hard to comprehend that nine million combatants and six million civilians died over the course of four years and less than four months. The hand-to-hand -hand combat in the trenches of this war mud and the blood, it's just hard to imagine, were among the most gruesome of all times. It is most fitting that we commemorate the Armistice Building, Centennial in this building and in this room, as they are the legacy of World War I and funded as a memorial to all who served in war. San Franciscans, they love their opera and they love their museums, but they've been trying for years to build their own museum and their own opera. But until one man, Charles Kendrick, went to bed to make it a memorial to all those who served in our armed forces, it didn't succeed. It really wasn't going anywhere. Major Charles Kendrick was a heroic San Franciscan who served his country in World War I. He was wounded two times in this war, and he was also gassed. For his valor, he was awarded the Silver Star and obviously the Purple Heart. 
When he returned to San Francisco after the war, he dedicated the next 12 years to realize the dreams of our city and to build the War Memorial Veterans Building and the Opera House. Major Kendrick was intimately involved in organizing the American Legion. <clears throat> Having been elected in 1919 as the California representative to the National Executive Committee and as the first American Legion National Vice Commander. He was a member of local San Francisco Post, number one, which was one of the largest in the nation. And I know he would be proud that the U.S. World War I Centennial Commission has designate, designated San Francisco's War Memorial, as Putin said, one of the hundred World War I Centennial places. And we have the honor to have with us today for this commemoration his daughter and some of his family. Second. 
They saw 60 million people were killed in the Second World War. They saw the Holocaust. They saw the Great Depression and the currency manipulation and protectionism that aggravated it. And they said, what a crummy world. <laughs> and we are a part of it just as we are today, whether we like it or not, we're part of it. So they set out to produce something better. Wasn't the United States telling everybody what to do, but we could get the leadership. I think there were 44 countries that uh, Bretton Woods that laid the groundwork for a different kind of economic system in the world. And then came the Cold War and NATO, which did a magnificent job. And I think it's fair to say that by the time the Cold War came to an end, there had been built with a lot of leadership from the United States a security and economic commons from which everybody benefited, including us. There's nothing wrong with somebody else benefiting, is there? We should take heart that the world was better. That commons is falling apart. And we are fanning that flame. So we've got to pull our act together and say, what are the problems? There is a crummy world out there, a world full of disturbances. But we are part of it, whether we like it or not. So we have a stake in doing something about it. So I say, as we think about World War I, learn the lessons. We were smart enough after World War II not to be um, aggravating our enemies. We reached out to Germany and Japan, and we helped them become healthy, economic, and de democratic countries and part of a constructive world. That was a totally different approach and a much better approach. But we now have to say to ourselves again, what a crummy world we're now. But we are part of it, whether we like it or not. So we better get in there and do something constructive. Thank you.
signed, signed on the 11th hour, on the 11th day, in the 11th month in 1918, our city's residents filled Market Street in celebration. Unfortunately, nearly a thousand men and women never made it back home for the celebration or for the parade that was held on April of the following year. They sacrificed their lives in the war to keep us safe here in San Francisco and throughout the country. It is fitting for San Francisco to commemorate, commemorate what is now known as Veterans Day. Each year we honor our veterans as well as the families of those that lost loved ones and those that continue to serve in our military. And I am proud that my grandfather served in the Army in the 1960s. We've come a long way since World War I. Back then, women only were allowed to serve as military nurses, and I see someone dressed, two people actually dressed up as nurses here today. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the valor of our servicemen of color was often overlooked or buried in history. There is still work to be done, but we are fighting to make sure that anyone who wants to defend and serve their country can do so without facing discrimination. It is important that on this day we recognize the bravery and the sacrifices of all veterans serving members and regardless of their race, gender, or sexual orientation. We appreciate and honor their service, and I want to thank today's host, Secretary, former Secretary of State George Schultz and Charlotte Schultz, the protocol chief here in San Francisco, for their continued work and efforts to try and support all amazing things here in San Francisco, the Armistice Centennial Committee, and the generous donors of this commemoration. And of course, thank you to all the veterans who are here today. Your service is appreciated. Your service and sacrifice is why we are here to honor and remember the challenges that our country not only faced during your service, but will continue and we will not give up. We will roll up our sleeves as the Secretary has asked us to do and continue the fight for the freedom of all people of the United States of America. Thank you all so much for being here.
They say we have done what we could, but until it is finished, it is not done. They say we have given our lives, but until it is finished, no one can know what our lives gave. They say our deaths are not ours, they are yours. They will mean what you make them. They say, whether our lives and our deaths were for peace and a new hope or for nothing, we cannot say. It is you who must say this. We leave you our deaths. Give them their meaning. We were young, they say. We have died. Remember us. The loveliness of Paris seemed somehow sadly gay. The glory that was Rome is of another day. I've been terribly alone and forgotten in Manhattan. I'm going home to my city.